Good morning, my friend. Travis Egan here from Hancock Mortgage Partners. Today is Monday, August 19th, 2019, and I'm here with your daily musing and lesson learned. Let me start with an apology. Uh, this one will be a little bit longer than normal. Uh, and if you're watching live, please hashtag live. If you're watching on a replay, please hashtag replay. Uh, I'm gonna read a story, and it's I'm reading it not because I wanna show you that I can read, but more so because the story was so powerful, I don't want to miss any of the words. I just think it's really that, that important. It's told from the perspective of a cab driver from New York City. Uh, the cab driver's name is Kent Nurburn. Uh, so this is his story, uh, but I think you'll get why I'm reading it to you. When I arrived at the address, the building was dark, except for a single light in the ground floor window. Under these circumstances, many drivers would just honk once or twice, wait a short minute, and drive away. Too many bad possibilities awaited a driver who went up to a darkened building at 2.30 in the morning. But I had seen too many people trapped in life of a poverty who depended on the cab as their only means of transportation. Unless a situation had a real whiff of danger, I always went to the door to find the passenger. It might, I reason, be someone who needs my assistance. Would I not want a driver to do the same for my mother or father if they called for a cab? So I walked to the door and knocked. Just a minute answered the frail elderly voice. I could hear the sound of something being dragged across the floor. After a long pause, the door opened. A small woman somewhere in her mid eighties stood before me. She was wearing a, a print dress and a pillbox with a veil pinned on it. Like you might see in a costume shop or a Goodwill store in the 1940s movie. By her side was a small nylon suitcase. The sound had been her dragging it across the floor. The apartment looked as if no one had lived in it for years. All the furniture was covered with sheets. There were no clocks on the walls, no knickknacks, no utensils on the counters. In the corner was a cardboard box filled with photos and glassware. Would you carry my bag to the car, she said. I'd like a few moments alone. If you could come back and help me, I'm not very strong. I took the suitcase to the cab then returned to assist the woman. She took my arm and we walked slowly towards the cab. She kept thanking me for my kindness. It's nothing, I told her. I just try to treat my passengers the way I would want my mother treated. Oh, you're such a good boy, she said. Her praise and appreciation were almost embarrassing. When we got in the cab, she gave me an address, then asked, could you drive through downtown? It's not the shortest way, I answered. Oh, I don't mind. See, I'm in no hurry. I'm on my way to hospice. I looked in the rearview mirror, her eyes were glistening. I don't have any family left, she continued. The doctor says I should go there. He says I don't have very long. Quietly, I reached over and shut off the meter. What route would you like me to go, I asked. For the next two hours, we drove through the city. She showed me the building where she had once worked as an elevator operator. We drove through the neighborhood where she and her husband had lived when they had been first married. She had me pull up in front of a furniture warehouse that had once been a ballroom where she had gone dancing as a girl. Sometimes she would have, a, she would have me slow in front of a particular building or a corner and would just sit and stare into the darkness, saying nothing. As the first hint of sun was cre uh, creasing, the, creasing the horizon, she suddenly said, I'm tired, let's go now. We drove in silence to the address she had given me. It was a low building like a small convalescent home with a driveway that passed under a portico. Two orderlies came out of the cab to meet the cab as soon as we pulled up. Without waiting for me, they opened the door and began assisting the woman. They were, they were solicitous and intent, watching her every move. They must have been expecting her. Perhaps she had phoned them right before we left. I opened the trunk and took the small suitcase up to the door. The woman was already seated in a wheelchair. How much do I owe you, she asked, reaching into her purse. Nothing, I said. You have to make a living, she answered. There are other passengers, I responded. Almost without thinking, I bent and gave her a hug. She held on to me tightly. You gave an old woman a little moment of joy, she said. Thank you. There was nothing more to say. I squeezed her hand once, then walked out to the dim morning light. Behind me, I could hear the door shut. It was the sound of closing on a life. I did not pick up any more passengers that shift. I drove aimlessly lost in thought. For the remainder of that day, I could he hardly talk. What if that woman had gotten an angry driver or one who was impatient to end his shift? What if I had refused to take the 
the run and honked once, then driven away. What if I had been foul mood, had refused to engage the woman in conversation? How many other moments like that had I missed or failed to grasp? We're also conditioned to think that our lives revolve around great moments, but great moments often catch us unaware. When that woman hugged me and said that I had brought her a moment of joy, it was possible to believe that I had been placed on earth for the sole purpose of providing her with that last ride. I do not think I have ever done anything in my life that was more important. So I encourage you today, think of those mundane moments when you might have a huge impact on somebody's life and not realize it. Every trivial, unexpected moment could turn into be one of those great moments that you'll hook the rest of your life around that will be the anchor for you to live the rest of your life through. So thank you for letting me tell, share this story with you. Thank you for watching today. Uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Daily Musings and Lessons Learned. Thanks so much. Have a beautiful day.